There's more to sight than just being able to see the crowd. You can definitely feel the atmosphere. There's a vibe in the air, there's the energy in the air, there's the sound. It's amazing to, to hear the fans, especially when we run out of the tunnel. I'm Jake Olson. I'm the long snapper of the University of Southern California Trojans. I'm completely blind, I, I have no eyes. I went into playing football with the mentality that I had nothing to lose. Long snapping is an art. You definitely have the mechanics, but a lot of it's just feel. Feeling that ball come off your fingertips in a spiral, how hard you're throwing it, you know, where you're releasing it, just kind of getting that velocity and, and that and the accuracy. Set. There we go. Life's unfair, football's unfair, but at the same time, it's up to you of how far you want to take yourself. When I was eight months old, I was diagnosed with a rare form of eye cancer called retinoblastoma. When the doctors found my cancer, it was completely taken over my left eye, so they almost immediately removed my left eye. From there on, you know, just a cycle of, you know, the cancer coming back, then we fight it with treatments. Doctors finally said, listen, we've pretty much exhausted all, all treatment options. The safer option is just, you know, the removal of the eye. Growing up, in the 2000s where Coach Carroll was so dominant with USC, it was hard not to be a USC fan. I always loved football. I continued to play flag football in my eighth grade year after losing my sight. It was not anything close to, to tackle football. As I entered high school, I decided not to play football for my freshman and sophomore year. It really was something that I didn't think I could do, but eventually my love for the game really overcame any doubts. And, and I learned how to Set. be an asset. Set. There you go. Money. I just love the camaraderie of football. I love being part of the team. Love putting on, you know, just the pads and the jersey and stuff. And being part of the team was enough just to, to get me to try. are just as good as boys in anything. We know how to hit. We know how to run. And we can definitely play football. So when I heard boys chanting, beat that girl, beat that girl, all it made me want to do was beat them even better. I'm Sam Gordon, I'm 14 years old, and I started the first female tackle football league. I've been playing with the boys since I was nine years old. In my very first season, I scored 35 touchdowns, got like 1,900 yards. Sometimes after I'd beat them, the parents would come out onto the field and grab their son's face mask and be like, don't let a girl beat you. I wanted to start the Girls Tackle Football League after talking at a school assembly and asking the question, how many girls here would want to play tackle football? Almost every hand in the room went up. So I got the idea like, okay, if there's this many at this one school, imagine how many there are in Utah or just in the nation. So I talked to my dad and he talked with some other people. After a while, we had the first season of the Utah Girls Tackle Football League up and running. Hey, let's go. Yeah, come on, ladies. Football is the last frontier in girls' sports, and if you think about it, girls can play on girls' teams in every sport that you can think of, except for the country's most popular sport. We limited participation to 50 girls. Those spots filled up in less than a week. The following year, we had 100 girls, and then this season, we've had over 200 girls who are playing. Every year we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. One, two, three, men! It would be amazing for it to go into high schools, colleges, and even its own professional league. And that's going to be a tough goal to reach, but I am really ambitious and I feel like we could do it. 
with the girls, you can tell that everybody really wants to be there, and so everybody's just super into it and always willing to learn. But with the girls, every practice is just an awesome time. Okay, squad, listen up. There's more than one way to end a game of sports ball. There's the walk-off home run, the sudden death goal, the buzzer beater. But within the adrenaline-addled psyche of the American sports fan, can any of them produce a heart attack like a successful Hail Mary pass? Don't answer that. It's rhetorical. Why are Hail Marys special? Because they're unicorns. Since 1975, there's only been 28 of them in professional football. Why? Because they're almost impossible to get right. To complete a Hail Mary, the pass needs to be long, like thrown from midfield long, with little or no time remaining on the clock. And you need to be losing, and the pass must lead to a touchdown that results in at least a tie, but preferably a win. That is a Hail Mary. <gasps> Most quarterbacks are likelier to marry a supermodel than to throw a successful Hail Mary in their career. Exhibit A, Tom Brady. So how did this play, which practically requires an act of God, come to pass? See what I did there? Easy, with a prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. So it's December 28, 1975. 50 yards from the end zone, but needing a touchdown to win, Cowboys quarterback and devout Catholic, Roger Staubach, whispers a Hail Mary to himself. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee and launches a desperation pass to receiver Drew Pearson. The Cowboys win and the Hail Mary is christened forevermore. Any questions? Good. Now go win me some ball games. Well, it's a 360 degree game. There's no padding. There is a high risk involved in it because it is a full contact sport and yeah, you really can cop it from any angle. But we're pretty tough and we get straight back up from tough hits. GWS's first goal. I'm Chloe Malloy and I'm a women's footballer. Let's go girls. AFL, or the Australian Football League, is best described as a combination of rugby, football and soccer. I think if you ask any Australian, it's a really big deal. It defines us, it's a part of our culture. I think everyone has an AFL team that they support. My uncle played football for Collingwood, so I grew up watching him and I immediately wanted to do it. Back when I was a little girl, I actually played football for three to four years, but then there's that drop-off that a lot of girls have um, because there is no pathway into a women's boarding career. In 2017, a women's league was officially introduced. The key, good stretch from the All Australian. The AFL women's changed the path of life for me that I never thought I'd have. Great work in the contest from Chloe Malloy. It's brought out the little girl's dream that I had back when I did play football. I think the AFL women's is breaking down a lot of barriers that once existed amongst women in sport. No matter what race, what sexual identity you are, it really doesn't matter and anyone can play. Some people just don't agree that women should be playing football, so that's probably a challenge that I face and that the whole league face as well. The best way to react to all the criticism is just not to react at all and keep doing what we enjoy. One hope that I have is that if any little girl or boy flicks on the TV, they know full well that that's a sport that they can go into, no matter if it's being played by men or women. How many people have the opportunity to be a world champion at anything? We have the opportunity to do something that no one else does. This isn't played anywhere else in the world. So yeah, like it's serious, like we want to win. We're here to watch unicycle football. It's football on unicycles. 
We stick to NFL rules as closely as possible. Except there are a few exceptions because we're riding a unicycle. We play five on five, two receivers, a blocker, a center, and a quarterback. Everything has to be done on a wheel. The second your foot touches the ground, you're done. Each team plays 14 games. There's 56 regular season games total, then wild card playoffs, then playoffs, and then the Super Bowl. Every Sunday, some people have been doing this for 10 years now. My team, the Blackouts, we're undefeated, and we're going to be playing the reigning champs, the Herons. Bulldoze them over. Bulldoze them. This game is very important because we want to maintain our undefeated status leading up to the Super Bowl. They're definitely gunning for us. They're practicing just for us. I think that a lot of times people come to this game, what shocks them is the level of play. We're crashing at 15 miles an hour. It's not a joke. Some people get seriously injured. Most people learn to ride unicycle because they came and witnessed this event and they're like, I've got to do this. Once you catch that first ball, once you get that first rush, once you hear the crowd scream your name once, that's a feeling you can't get anywhere else. That's almost like a religion church to us here. There's passion, you know? It's a show. It's a spectacle. It's also a sport. I've cherished every minute of it. It's, you can't replace it with anything. There's nothing else like it at all. <laughs>